Hello, Freedom Casters, and welcome to this episode of Freedom Cast, leaving normal behind. We are back at it. You got Jordan and Miranda here talking with another episode in our book series, and we're super excited about it. Today, we are going to be talking about the energy code, how to master the energy code. Yeah, if you've seen my book title, that's a big part of it. And you might have been wondering, what the heck is this guy talking about? What's the energy code? Well, we're going to share a little bit about that today. You're going to get Miranda's take on a lot of these things. Uh, If you want more of my take, I'll be talking about it, but just go ahead and pick up my book. (laughs) Is that supposed to entice them? Yes. I mean, I'm sure they care more about what you think. But, like, I'm just saying, if you want to read about it and don't necessarily want to hear us, pick up the book. I gotcha, I gotcha. We actually received our first physical copies of the book this week, Mm. and they look delicious. They look very (laughs) scrumptious. (laughs) They look very good. So we are just getting super excited for this book launch. It's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that, definitely. October 19th is the big book launch day. I know we've been talking about it a lot, but we are pumped. Uh, we are pumped beyond measure for this thing to come out. It's been a lot of work, uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of consistent effort after the fact too, with a lot of marketing stuff. But the marketing stuff is fun, and I like it. So yes, it's definitely good. a marathon, not a sprint. It's just been yes a lot of consistent work, and you know I really am not very good at running long distances, so. I'm terrible yeah. at it. <laughs> so I just want to be done it. I'm impressed no, that but we, I know we we've made it this far. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us the first part of mastering the energy code? Energy code level one is actually pretty simple, and I don't go into into I don't go into depth with this in my book because my book is not a diet book. But at the same time, I also think it's super important uh, that we're remembering some of the basics, uh, some basic habits that can really propel us forward and really help us finish out our goals. So level one is starting with the basics and eating healthy. Yeah, and I mean, this is a journey we've been on for a very long time, trying to eat healthier. Uh, a girl from work today brought in candy. I haven't told you this yet, but it was it was so good, man. It I was... told you I had a pumpkin scone already today <laughs> and a couple of the pumpkin cookies. So, so I <laughs> good. maybe not take my own advice today, but... Yeah, those like the little cookies and cream, mm. Hershey bars, and uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, wow. It was like, it was the best mix I've ever seen. It was delicious. How much of this did you eat? Did you steal I, it? Did I you took, grab it out of her hands? <laughs> she brought it. I said, that's mine. I took it. I ran. I ate it all. It's crazy. No. <laughs> you might have to apologize. Am did I? you get me some? <laughs> no, I ate it all. Oh, wow. <laughs> you think it would last that long? No, it's a 15 a... minute drive. I know. <laughs> 15 minutes? <laughs> that's crazy. But yes. Like but anyway, said, anyway, okay. It is, it's a challenge, and it's definitely something that you're always working on because you can, in a snap, go from eating healthy, eating your apple a day, to just, you know, diving back down into that sugar coma. So it's definitely something you have to really keep up on. And like Jordan said, his book isn't about, it's not a, a health book or a book about how to eat healthy. But it is just you know when you're eating something whether it's healthy or not because you know how it makes how it makes you feel even if it's a nice sugar rush for you know a couple minutes you you know the crash you know the guilt so it's definitely it's intuitive even if we don't really want it to be sometimes you know yeah and I think just be I think it starts with just being conscious about it and like okay I can have a treat once in a while but if you're starting to go for that every day I mean me and Miranda learned a lot and I. And I talk about this more too in the book, but when we did the whole 30 eating program, we learned a lot about food and kind of, you know, if, if you're wanting to reach for that sugar after your, you know, after every single meal, that's not necessarily you being hungry. That's your sugar dragon inside of you kind of telling you like, I want this, Mm -hmm. Uh, I want this, but maybe I don't really need this. And we kind of had to battle with that for a while. And even just battling with it for a little bit can just make you more aware of like, man, like I really do just crave that. And if. If that's what I'm craving, if I'm just always craving that that sweet, you know, that's not necessarily good because we need to be able to say no to those things. And like like we said, you know, Miranda and I are all about cookies, you know, m- maybe even more than <laughs> once in a while, and we we are still working on that. But I think it's so important not to just always have that be the go-to. Like we shouldn't, um, you know, that's not what what gives us energy. What's the passage in scripture about that like man does not live by bread alone yes that's what i was trying to think <laughs> man should not eat pounds of sugar man <laughs> should not live by cookies alone yes. 
<laughs> no, but that's not where we should be getting our substance. Our substance, 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 sustenance. Sustenance. There it is. I knew. I knew I was. I was close. gonna let you suffer a little longer. Wow. You, like, why can't you bail me out? Wow, that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Just bail me out. I bail you out all the time. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So that's important just to think about. And like we said, we're still working on that. But I mean, I think it just look at how you're eating and then just make some better healthy choices and then take some slow positive changes uh, or go go for broke and really just, you know, do, do a program like the Whole30 or, you know, just go on a, you know, a couple day fast or something. Anything to break. I think it can just be truly helpful just to, to, to break the, I'm not going to break the mold, but just to break Cycle. the everyday, yeah, th- yeah. Oh, wow. Bail you out, that's right. <laughs> okay, you need to <laughs> bail me out. You can finish what I was saying then. How well, about that? yeah, I think it's kind of cool. We actually did, uh, um, was it 24-hour fast? It um, ended up being more like 36. 30... If you don't eat for a full day, then, then you sleep. Yeah, you, yeah I think if you, if you don't eat after 8 the one night, that's 4 hours, and then 24 hours, 28, and you don't eat till 8 the next day, that's 36. Yeah, so we did a 36-hour fast. <laughs> And it was actually... we didn't wake up at 2 a.m. and we're like, the day's over, let's eat. <laughs> well, maybe you didn't. I'm oh, just yeah. kidding. That's true. But it was really cool just to give your system a break because you don't think about how much your stomach is just constantly working. Like it gets, you know, it gets worn out, I'm sure. So just taking a day and not eating anything, letting your body reset. And it was cool also because we spent that day um, in prayer too and we kind of used it as just like a refresher day and we used it we did a lot of brainstorming that day and yes. we just used it as like a we put our flag in the ground and said okay this is like how far we've gotten this is what we need to accomplish yep. from here to like the end of the year and i would i mean i would definitely suggest that to anybody that if you feel really frazzled or worn out or you're just you know it's good to just do something totally different totally out of your routine and just look at how far, like what you've done so far and look at where you need to go. It's very helpful. Yeah. And you, we, we had coffee that day. We had some tea, you know, it was, it was fun. It was just a day where we were able to spend that time. Just like Miranda said, just, uh, you know, talking about how far we've come, but I, it was true. It was a truly good reset and I hope we can do it again sometime soon. And I'm sure yeah. we will. Yeah. And just a word of advice. If you do that, don't go on like a long car ride because I had to pee every 10 minutes probably. Yep. Yeah, because so. your body's not getting like, yeah. salt and stuff. But <laughs> so. it's, yeah, I don't think it's good to do it like all the time. But I mean, you know, they they f- fasting was a big part of what they did in like biblical times, and I think it is good. Even even just fasting, different things. I mean, we've talked before about you know being away from TV uh, for mm-hmm. a time, and you yeah. know, and fasting from food is is really difficult to do for a day. But it's not at the same time. If you think about it, like you can do anything for a day. Like you can you can not eat for a day, like, except hold your breath. That's true. <laughs> I can't hold my breath very long at all. I have no lungs. <clears throat> well, I hope you have some lungs. I have some lungs. All right. I think we need to move on, or we're never going to make it through all the. But energy the energy codes. code is good stuff, and this is like it's basics, but it is it is so important. I mean, we could do just a everyone podcast could use a reminder. You know. Yeah, I mean, we definitely could. I, you know, I was, uh, you know, reading through my old book today because I was doing the audio. I just read through my old books on occasion. Just you know, I love hearing myself talk. <laughs> no, but I was editing my old. Uh, my audiobook, which I'm getting up soon, and just even so, even hearing some of my own like advice from you know healthy eating in the past and things, I'm like, oh man, like I need to re- I need to get back into that. Like I need to remember. So it's it's always good to hear. It is. It really is. Advice. Because Not... the brain needs repetition. And yep. That's, you know that's how you learn. Like maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go on a fast for a day. Like you know, it's yeah. cool. Do it. Do it to it. All right, Miranda. Energy code level two. This one, ha. Jordan loves, <laughs> loves to give me a hard time about this one. Until I just looked at it. So uh, this next step to mastering the energy code is getting enough sleep. And I am the worst at getting eight hours of sleep because... You are pretty bad. I wake up, whenever I'm working, I wake up at five in the morning. I'm definitely... I wake up at 5.30. I wake up at five. You wake up at five? <laughs> oh man, I've been doing the math for so long, wrong for so long. I've been long. wondering why you've been okay with nine thirty, but now you know. So, yeah. So I I'm wake not okay up at with five. Nine thirty anymore. I like the morning. It's my time where I can get stuff done, and I just I really love that time. So I think it's important to 
do that before I go to work. I don't have to wake up at 5 to get to work on time. Some people do. But you are a little crazy with not being late though, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a fear of being of being late. Yeah. So I, but it's okay. That's, that's in this case. Not important for us. Not important. It's not important right now. <laughs> and I always start thinking about going to bed around nine o'clock, but then you do. You always think about it. It doesn't happen usually until about ten thirty. Ten ten thirty. That's the true. average. So I'm consistently getting less than eight hours every night, and I do try to catch up a little bit on the weekends. But then I'm like, wow, I'm gonna be so productive on Saturday. I'm gonna wake up at five again. I'm gonna wake up at six because I have the whole day and I can get so much done. There's so much morning. And I get all excited about it, and then I still don't catch up sometimes. So it's bad because your body really does need that time, especially if you are, um, if you do work out a lot, or if you do have a job that's strenuous, or you know, everybody needs sleep. Your body just needs to recover from the beating it took during the day. So, so even though I'm the absolute worst at this, get enough sleep. Yeah. Yeah, and like Miranda said, especially if you're if you're doing hardcore workouts or you're just ha- you're really beating beating on your body every day, just you know really tough on it. Like you need that sleep to recover. I mean, that's that's how the body, um, you know, can, recovers. Recovers. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> that's how you get. I mean, that's. I mean, sleep is pretty much the number one number one way to get your energy stores back up, and it can it prevents you from getting sick. You know, it helps you build muscle. Like there's so much good things about sleep. You know, but sleep is often the first thing we give up in today's day and age. Like, okay, I need to get this done. What can I give up? Like, well, okay, I'm, I still want to watch my TV tonight. So, like, no, it's okay. I'll just stay up late and I'll get up early. Like, you know, it's yeah. just, it's always the first thing to go. Um, and, you know, some people can be totally fine without eight hours for a while. And I think some people can even be fine with that, you know, you know, even later on and, you know, more regularly. But, for the most part, most of the research research says get seven, eight hours every night or you're going to be facing sleep deprivation. And that's just unhealthy. It's not good for your body. No, it's not. So <laughs> what are you laughing at? I love you. <laughs> so that's number two, get enough sleep. And I know they do have um, new alarms on your phone and stuff, bedtime alarms instead of like wake up alarms. It's oh, cool. Set an alarm. I haven't done it because I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. But Didn't you reference that in the preface of the book? Like, that's not a p- good piece of advice, like setting an alarm to go to bed or something? Oh, I think I did, I think yeah. you said that. I think I said it was bad advice. Oh. <laughs> but. Whoops, I didn't mean well, to I just throw said, you into the... I just said I wouldn't do it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I haven't done it. Yeah, I mean, so. so. Yeah, so don't but do that. I'm sure it would work for some people, though. Yeah. But. Yeah. I just so, thought about it. I just thought about it. <laughs> Sorry. So, I don't know where to go from Okay, here. number, energy code <laughs> level three. What's the next level, Miranda? Staying digitally organized. You say that really nice. I was I was scared to say digitally. <laughs> digitally. <laughs> and that's really, really important. And Especially if you have um, a lot of projects that you're doing that are online. Like Miranda and I have all kinds of stuff we're doing online because of the podcast, because of the book, uh, all of the stuff we got going on with my website. Miranda has a website. We got courses up on Udemy. We have stuff all over the place. If we weren't digitally organized, we'd be, you know, we would lose everything. Yes, we have quite the smattering of content across the interwebs. Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> and it gets really confusing when, you know, for example, um, we're actually in the process of getting our um, podcasts up on YouTube, so they'll be up on YouTube as well. And yeah, so look forward to that, man. I'm excited. And we have these, you know, images for the blog posts that we do it with. And we need to find them all, but they're not organized. And something that would take 10 seconds of just, you know, hitting the button, highlighting all of them, and moving them to a different folder, instead takes forever because you have to go through and see, you know, because we did it all at different times, and they're all, like, because we use Canva, which is just a program for, you know, making images. And, yeah, it just takes forever because you have to look through, and it's not organized. And that's just a huge waste of time that you know just because we didn't keep it organized at the beginning it's now coming back to bite us so that's why you should do your best we love google drive we put a lot of things on there we also love trello i'm sure jordan's talked about trello a lot yeah we don't have to talk more about trello on here because i mean i'm all about it but 
Yeah, that's one of Jordan's courses is on how to effectively utilize Trello. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Yep. And, I mean, Trello for us, and you're not going to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. You can talk about it. Yeah, you're just as obsessed it's, as I am. I mean, we talk about Trello every day. It's just so helpful for us because I can be at the grocery store. Okay, but that would never happen because I hate grocery shopping, so it would be Jordan at the you grocery, grocery store. You grocery shop like, without me like three times since we've <laughs> been together. And so Jordan's at the grocery store, and if I'm home and I'm like, man, I forgot to tell him to, you know, get bananas, then I would just add it to, like, we have a list for the grocery shopping. I just add it to the list while he's there. I don't even need to text him or anything. It's just already there. And, he, yep. you know, it's just so easy. Yep. And the other really cool thing, now that we're talking about it, I mean, it's, it's it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very well put. <coughs> I might as well cough now. <coughs> I mean, now that we're talking about it, I mean, one of our boards is our board that we use together. Uh, and we end up putting a lot of stuff in a to-do list on there. Uh, and then we just delineate it from there. Like one of us can add it to the to-do list for either or, either one of us. Um, but we put it on there and then we can either move it to our, our list or just cross it off from there. Uh, but it's just a general place, you know, we put things that like we need to do together. Like one of us needs to do this uh, at some point. It's not necessarily need to do it right away. Because what do I like to say about things you should do right away? You should just do them. If they can take you a couple minutes, just do them and then don't put them on a list. But that's that's just another random suggestion that I found helpful. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about Trello. It's amazing. You should give it a try and use it. I absolutely love it. And even if you're just online and you have a bunch of pictures or something that you want to keep organized so you can go back and look at them and enjoy them just find a way that works for you do it by year or by location or by who you're with whatever works for you but set up a system beforehand so then you can easily follow it and then you can easily go back and not have to waste time looking for oh i know i have this one picture somewhere and uh, then you're not able to find it. So, yep. you know, staying organized in the digital realm. Yeah, and I think it applies to, I mean, I think most of you out there probably do jobs that involve a computer where you're having to at least, you know, a couple times per day answer emails or copy and pasting. And that's where I found Trello to be so freaking useful is in my project management. Um, you know, when I have to go, uh, say I'm uploading a book even for a client or for myself, like having all the information at one place. Like I have one board for that book and has all the information I need so that when I go to upload the book, when I go to submit promos for the book, when I'm doing multiple things uh, based on one kind of task, I can have everything I need in one place. And maybe for you that's organization in like a document or a spreadsheet, and that's fine. You know, that, those can be really helpful. Uh, but if you're finding yourself, man, I never, like, I never have this all in one place. I can't keep you know, I can't organize this. I feel like I don't know where any of my files are. Uh, it can it, it can really waste a lot of your own time trying to find that stuff. And knowing where stuff is and having it readily available just can make it can make things a breeze. It can make things that much easier. Yeah, back when I was a customer service representative, back in the back in the day, two thousand what fourteen or something. Back in Meggiesburg. <laughs> yeah. Two thousand fifteen, but... we left. So you were. Customer 15, service. Yeah. 15, yeah. So I had, I was very intense about my email organization. I had all the folders, I had all the subfolders. I only kept the things that I had to work on that was visible. I mean, it was, it was amazing. They should do studies on it. Yeah, you were, <laughs> I don't find it's that necessary. You were, you were kind of a freak with organization. <laughs> I got made emails. fun of. No, but you did? Well, I mean, I made fun of you. My, I mean, I was also really <laughs> intense about my desk, too. It was very, yep. very clean. So. You're a funny girl. Yeah. <laughs> but you found that really helped you. I mean, it really, I really think there's did. a yeah. there is a point where you can probably go overboard with organization. Like, it's one of those things. If you're spending all of your time organizing your email inbox <laughs> yourself, I think if people have, like, automation set up, that can be huge. But if you're just always, like, just cleaning up your inbox, that's a lot of time, too. I mean, yeah. But you know I'm a... <clears throat> work hard kind of girl so yeah 
so that's why I keep you around to keep me working smart. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, we, <laughs> it's like our yin and yang. It's, it it's work hard and work smart, but we're great because there are a lot of times when I don't want to work hard and you're like, and we just got to do it. And then there's a lot of times where you're sitting there ty typing something 40 times and I'm like, Miranda, there's a thing called copy and paste. There's a better way. Put it, put it in a document, <laughs> copy, paste. You're freaking me out. <laughs> but we're great. We're a great match because there's, there's times when you need to work hard, sit down and, you know, just buckle in and get through it. And then there's times where you just wasted a couple hours and you could have done that easier. So it's good. It's good to have a good mix. Yes. So number four is Miranda's just, um, you know, bread and butter. It's her baby. She's not pregnant, but it's her baby. It's getting organized in real life, you know, so we're getting beyond the digital realm. Digital realm is super important. We're um, but, talking RL right now. We're talking RL. We're talking, and, is this real life, real life? Yeah, it can make a huge difference to be organized in real life. In the same way, to know where your files are, to know where your real life stuff is, to have a place for stuff. Um you know, I, I would never have said I'd be all about real life organization before, um, but man, it does it does make a huge difference, and I really enjoy you know living in an apartment where like everything does have its place. Because I mean, there's a times where I've made made fun of Miranda. I'm like, this is crazy. Like you don't have to put this in the exact same spot like every time, but <laughs> at the same time, it does make things easier. I mean, I still think it's a little crazy, but. I see the value in it too. You can see though, you can tell the things that we don't have a place for because they just meander around the apartment and you just, you know what I mean? Because if it the, has uh, a the place. The exercise ball. The exercise ball. It's always in a different place. It doesn't have a home. So it's just constantly rolling around the apartment. Yeah, it's, I don't even know. It's been, where is it now? In the sunroom? I don't, room? and that's the problem. Then you come home, where's the exercise ball? You gotta walk 20 steps to find it. I know, man. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a bigger house, it'd be a bigger issue. Yes. But. But if you had a bigger house, this is even more important. Yes, it really is. Yeah. Miranda, your eyes light up every time we talk about organization. This is your ba this is your passion. No, I it, it I absolutely do. is. I think it's so helpful because you just know where where is my water bottle, and then ah, it's where the water bottle always is. In the it's fridge. So, it's so simple, yeah. but it's so. <laughs> it's elegant. It's elegant. So get organized in real life. We're not going to talk too much about that one. We did. I'll yes, reference. Yes, we are. Yeah, we can. We'll but, talk about this forever. I mean, we did a whole podcast on it. I'll reference the podcast that we did about organization in the show notes, so you can go check out that one. That one was me basically interviewing Miranda on some tips and you know some of her thoughts from her uh, own practice with doing it, but then also reading Marie Kondo's, uh, dang it, what's it called? Tidying Up. The, the life-changing magic of tidying up and being a crazy butterfly or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not only say that because she's kind of nuts, but Miranda is too, so it works out. All right, energy code level five. It says trim the fat and cut out unnecessary tasks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> it just like piles up if I don't. <laughs> Trimming the fat and cutting out unnecessary tasks. That is the next energy code part level five. Of the energy code, and. I think everybody has stuff that they do that they don't really need to do. I'm trying to think of a really good example from us that we just kind of struggle with. I mean, I think... Like it's... oil changes. Going to the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Annual checkups. Going grocery shopping. I mean, yes. all these things. I wish those things you could do. No, I think <laughs> this really takes like uh, a brainstorming session for you uh, to do with just on your own or or a spouse or a significant other or a family member um, and really seeing what what's your what are you doing every day and maybe there's definitely going to be some stuff that might not be like totally necessary um, to do every single day I mean um, you know and that's how you that's how you really start creating time that's how you really you know manage your priorities is just making sure you're not doing uh, unnecessary tasks and that that's gonna look different for everyone I'm not saying that you definitely have things in your life that you shouldn't be doing, uh, but there are a lot of us, and I know this for a fact because it's at, you know we've had the same problem. Is like maybe we don't need to you know be doing this this type of thing. Maybe we don't need to be watching two hours of TV every night. But like I said before, we prioritize that and then don't get enough sleep. So why are we prioritizing um, you know having entertainment and having that break time versus giving our body the the rest it truly deserves? So. I don't think this is something we can give you concrete. Like this is definitely something you should cut out. It just it takes looking at your own life, 
uh, and seeing what you can cut out. Unless you thought of something else, Miranda. I don't want to be vague, and I don't want to be able to give you a good example there. <laughs> We're um, always bashing on TV, though. I wanted a different example. I know. I mean, but TV is, it's kind of, you know, it can really suck up a lot of time if you're not careful. Yep. Even just watching two episodes of something, it's two hours. Yep. It's, that's your whole night sometimes. Yeah, and I just think it, it takes looking at, like, the, the things that you're doing and seeing how you could make them better, too. Maybe meal prepping on Sunday is going to be how you save time during the week. Or, I mean, I'm trying to think of another example off the top of my head. But, I mean, there are definitely things that we do every day that maybe we could do, maybe we could be a little bit more efficient. Um, like perusing the social media. Yeah. Because that's, that's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still, like, I'll scroll on Facebook, and it seems like sometimes my brain goes away, like it's gone. And I'm like, why? You black out. Yeah, and then like you come to 20 minutes later. Why? Why am I doing this unnecessary task? Like, why am? Why aren't I reading a book instead? And then I, I did that the other night. I was like, just scrolling, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna scroll, scroll right now. I'm gonna go read a book. Because you're like, maybe, maybe if I scroll just a little bit further, there'll be something. Something amazing. Wonderful. But then, yeah, I don't know, something incredible. I guess. <clears throat> is that what it is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it better. Can you do it? I need you to bail me out here. Oh. What does he say? <laughs> what are you waiting for, kid? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. <laughs> How was that? I said incredible. So I thought it was yours. Well, was yeah, good. it is the Incredibles, but he says yeah, he says amazing. Well, they. they I wasn't ready out. for that, so I don't feel like it was my best. So don't judge me on that. Here you go. Are you ready now? You can do it. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll maybe in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, any other nope. advice on that one? I don't think so. All right, so what's the next one? I think, I mean, I think it's important, but I think, I mean, it really is what I said. I mean, we can't give you specific things in your life because we don't know. We don't follow you around every day. We don't know what you do. Um, but I think, you know, I think it's at least worth examining, and, and you know, maybe there are some things that, like, okay, I could do this better, or maybe I don't need to do that every day. Maybe I thought I wanted to do it. Maybe I thought I needed to do it, but maybe you don't. You agree with that? Yeah. Cool. Sure. Energy code level six. <laughs> energy code level six line up your goals with your core values we just did recently a podcast episode on destiny goals this is where this is really important because these your core values are going to be are going to really help you determine what they're going to help you to determine what your destiny goals are <laughs> how does that give you energy though i don't remember <laughs> This, this energy code, level six, is super important because um, if you aren't doing something that you're truly passionate about, if you aren't doing something that you love, uh, it's going to be that much harder to get up every day and do that. I mean, I think Miranda can speak to that, can speak to that with her job. I mean, it's not something she truly loves and truly cares about, so it's hard for you to find, like, it's not, it's not anything, like, you know, being an assistant grower is not like one of your core values. Like it doesn't really match up, you know, would you agree with that or? Yeah. It's, just... you, it's hard to have energy to do that kind of work if you don't like truly love it. It's just, if you think about if you're doing something that you really enjoy doing, like I really, I enjoy crocheting, for yeah. example. And I, you know, when you're doing something and you lose track of time because you're enjoying it so much, that means you're lined up and that means you're doing something that you're passionate about and that means that it's going to be that much easier and you're going to have that much more energy towards that goal but yeah like you said if I'm at work it's you know I'm you know it it's just not quite as exciting That's yeah all. yeah and we say we say core values versus like finding your passion because I think finding your passion sometimes can be cliche i think it's an important thing to reach for because i think you know we me and miranda definitely believe like god wants us to be happy you know but at the same time if we're just um you know you, you have to be real about it too you have to face reality too you can't just like miranda just can't sit there and crochet all day just for the sake of crocheting like that's not <laughs> it's not going to earn us any money and it's just not facing reality but i mean there's definitely times where you can find an interplay between that you know, you can you can work your passion. I don't know if that's a great way to say that, but you can work your passion. You can find a way to make money out of your side hustles and your projects in that way. Um, but if your main goals, if your main things that you're doing all the time aren't lining up, 
with with your core values, then you're going to lose energy over time very quickly. Uh, even if it's it can be a great goal, it can be something great to do, uh, but if you're not getting if you're not getting energy from doing it, if you're not able to pour yourself in and then also feel the feel the good vibes and just just to feel that excitement while you're doing it, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out so fast, and you're not going to be able to continue to do that. You're not going to be able to give your best self, and that's where I think it, it is super important to kind of get I guess get to know yourself in that way a little bit more. I mean, I think we've definitely found that. Um, but yeah, I'm all about the, that stuff lining up. And if it doesn't like, you know, you can't change it overnight, but it's something to work towards and something to think about in your own life and brainstorm as we always say, I love brainstorming. Brainstorming is like the way to fix things. It is. It really, it comes in handy, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you have anything anything more to say about core values and in that way? No, I was thinking that we should split this up into two podcast episodes since there's just a lot of good stuff left and I don't want to rush it. I mean, we only have four left. Do you think we could do that? Yeah, but I mean, it's like... So, due to the fact that Jordan and I spent 20 minutes talking about Trello again... We are going we to always do this to we always do this to you guys. We're sorry. We are Just get going on it. to get on it and get with us. Yes, we are going to talk about the last four steps to mastering the energy code in a different podcast because we just blabbered on and on and on. So And I think we'll talk a little bit more about the energy code as a whole and how you can incorporate it too. Yes, but we apologize for going on our Trello soapbox and I'm sure we'll get on it next time. Yeah. We need, we need one Trello-free episode. Yep. Well, thank you for listening to this episode, friends. If you want more information and are excited about my upcoming book, you can go to jmring.com slash volcanic-momentum. Is that right? <laughs> Honey? Yeah, I think that was right. Yeah. I just was trying to think. If you want more information about my book or – yeah. If you want more information about my upcoming book, Volcanic Momentum, you can go to jmring.com slash volcanic dash momentum. At this point, as, as this podcast episode is coming out, you can sign up for a free copy of that. Uh, if you're listening to this after the 19th, it's going to direct you to the Amazon page. You can grab the book on there in pretty much whatever format you would desire. It's going to be in paperback, hardcover, audiobook, and digital, yep. which I'm super excited to have all the different versions out. The book looks great. We're gonna. T- I talk about more of this stuff with more examples in the book. I think it's definitely worth picking up. We definitely appreciate your time here, uh, and we just wish you this, the best as you yeah. start to master your energy code. Stay tuned for the next episode on this. The very next episode will delve into the rest of these energy codes, uh, and I'm. We're just so excited for you to just get on board with us on that one. And stay spooky. Stay spooky, friends. Yeah.